Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the US Design Webinars 2020. My name is Wook, and I'll be your host today. Um, before we start, uh, can I check if all of you can hear me well? Please tap yes or OK in the chat box. Thank you. OK, this uh, free webinar series is held by VUS with the participation of VLT experts and invited speakers from well-known publishing houses such as Ofres University Press, Macmillan Education, Cambridge Assessment English, National Geographic Learning, MM Publications, and eFuture. We hope to bring you the most updated and practical teaching methods and techniques so that you can teach your class more effectively. So thank you for joining us in today's webinar, Strategies and Tips to Enhance Reading Literacy, presented by Mr. Gary Fanestas from eFuture. Before we start, please be informed that we will have the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Also, during that time, I'll send you the links for you to complete a survey about this webinar and to download your certificate of participation. And now let me introduce to you Mr. Gary Fonestas. Now over to you, Gary. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. Can uh, you guys let me know if you can hear me? All right. All right, good afternoon. Hope everyone's having a good Friday. <laughs> All right, let me share my thing here. All right, how is everyone doing today? And it's great to, great to be here. I want to thank VUS Tesla for um, allowing you future to present for their uh, webinar series. And I hope today that I can provide you guys with some, uh, some help and some ideas on how to teach reading uh, in your classroom. So I'm going to go over, yeah, strategies and tips for reading literacy today. So I'm going to try to be very interactive with you guys today. So please type in the chat. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys some questions and uh, hope to uh, help you as much as I can today. All right. So let's get started. So this is going to be my agenda for the next hour. Uh, so I'm going to start with what is reading, kind of put us in that mode of uh, thinking about reading, um, thinking about the challenges, and also kind of present to you the big five of reading instruction, all right? And then after that, we'll go, in through, go through some teaching methods um, with the big five, kind of explain one by one how to kind of present them to your students and how to teach them in your classrooms. And as well, um, I know a lot of times we use course books. Um, course books have their kind of lessons for reading, but kind of thinking about using readers and graded readers um, to help um, kind of enhance, again, uh, your students' literacy and the reading process at the same time. As well as, of course, giving you some reading activities to kind of make reading fun for your students because when things are fun, the students are more eager to learn, right? And then I'll have my kind of final thoughts at the end and we'll have our Q&A session. So like, uh, like was stated earlier, uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A box or save them for the Q&A time at the end. And uh, I'll look forward to getting to those questions, all right? All right, so first question for you guys. What is reading? What is reading? So can you, can you write in the chat, uh, what, what do you guys think reading is? What, what is your definition of reading? Yeah. So share that with me and I'll share, you, share with you what my definition of reading is. So in the chat, to gain knowledge, good. Reading is a difficult skill, very difficult. Yeah, decode some sort of messages. Read for gaining knowledge, read for pleasure. Comprehension of ideas. Oh, we have some really great answers in here. A critical thinking skill. Good. Okay. 
to understand text, make meaning out of text, reading as a way of getting information. Very good. So there's a lot of great answers. We're all in this kind of same, same group of thought for reading. It's great. Use eyes to travel around the words and use them, let's see, use them to interpret the meaning. Very good. So reading is making meaning from text. Did someone put in the chat? Making meaning from text. So there's kind of three main points for the reading. So identifying the words in print. So that's getting the word recognition, kind of like your vocabulary. So once you kind of are able to read the words and understand the words, kind of move on to the comprehension. So constructing the understanding from them. So when you read a group of texts, so first you start with knowing each words, each word, and then kind of putting them all together and comprehending them as a whole, in your, as your sentences, okay? And then bringing that all together. Okay? So practicing your fluency. Are you reading them accurately? Are you reading them, you know, how automatic are these words? So getting the fluency involved, okay? So that's kind of what is reading. So now let's kind of think about our students. Let's think about the students that we're teaching here. Um, in your classrooms, do your students like reading English books? Do they enjoy reading English books? No? Yeah. I think reading overall, some students nowadays don't enjoy reading. Not really, yeah. Seldom, some. Kids like pictures. Easy texts, yeah. Comics. Yeah, so hopefully today we can kind of try to harness teaching reading and try to make it more kind of attractive for the students to, to do. Yeah, reading stories. Yeah, so even if like in this age, you know, having your phone and reading something in English online can still be something that is possible um, to do in class as well. Yeah, interesting stories, so we have to tap into a lot of things. Good. Okay. And then now let's kind of think about, so first, just kind of sticking with your students. What are the challenges they have while for reading? Like why, you know, some people say it's very difficult for them. What, what kind of challenges do you think they face uh, when they're trying to read? New words. Yeah, so vocabulary words, it's probably one of the biggest reasons why. Overwhelmed, oh, that's, yeah. Bored with long texts, absolutely. Yeah, just their focus. How getting them engaged is a big problem. So that's kind of, that hopefully that's why we're here today to kind of help getting them engaged as well. I know body language to piece the meaning together. Yeah, sometimes if the books don't have pictures, the students can't really get the meaning meaning there. Yeah, they don't like the topics and familiar themes. Good. Okay, now how about for you guys as teachers? What what problems or what challenges do you guys have when when teaching your students? And students just pay attention to answer questions. Mm, abstract concepts, grammar, uh, to trying to uh, mix ability. That's one of the big ones beyond their knowledge, inspiring, this lack of vocab. All right, yeah, so I see a lot of things that hopefully I can help, I can cover for you guys today, kind of help you with some of these challenges that you guys are. Uh, Showing me no interest in the topic of the text. Yeah, doing the learning stuff. Well, the learning styles is a big one as well, Stephen. All right. Okay. So these are some of the challenges that kind of I thought for myself uh, when trying to teach reading. Uh, I was a teacher in South Korea for six years before joining eFuture, and just like all of you guys have uh, written in the chat, is not just uh, specific to one country. So. The new ideas for the text, unknown ideas that the students haven't been uh, exposed to, 
vocabulary, even phonics. And the, that goes in line with mixed level classes as well. So just kind of, we're going to try to go step by step with the reading process, um, like I talked about, and kind of hopefully help with that feeling like someone said, the student's feeling too overwhelmed. So trying to figure out that level for the student to feel comfortable with reading, and hopefully build that positiveness with reading, okay? So let's go through the big five. So these are kind of the steps for reading literacy, for English literacy in general, that the students should kind of take as they kind of get older and as they are exposed to more English, okay? So the first one, the first step is phonemic awareness, okay? So I'm just going to quickly go through the five and then um, kind of go more in depth with what these actually are in, in the classroom as well and for the students learning. Okay, so first we have phonemic awareness and then we followed up with phonics. Okay, so I think a lot of us have taught phonics and know the importance of phonics at the same time. And then vocabulary. So as you can see, if you, with the knowledge of these, each step kind of builds from the previous step. Okay? So then once we have vocabulary, we can practice on fluency and then comprehension. So this is the big five of reading literacy right here. So phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension, okay? So now let's kind of explain a little bit of what these um, kind of concepts are. So phonemic awareness is the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate individual sounds, the phonemes in spoken words, okay? So this is, this is what differentiates phonemic awareness from phonics. So phonemic awareness is just the sounds. So if the students are listening to music or they're being read a story, they start gaining that knowledge of the sounds of the English language. So this is kind of where it starts. Okay? And then building off the phonemic awareness, once they have the knowledge of these sounds, we bridge that gap with phonics. So this is when they learn the alphabet. It's like, okay, I heard this sound before in maybe this story. And then you present to them, you know, this, uh, this sound, okay? And this letter represents this sound. So that's putting the phonics together, okay? So when you make awareness is getting the sound and phonics is matching the sound with the written letter, all right? And then obviously you go into blending and putting those sounds together, start manipulating it by seeing the, the letters there. And once you do that, we get into vocabulary where they learn the words. So they refer to the words we must know to communicate. Okay? So as I always talked about, or like I mentioned earlier, each of these steps builds on each other. So vocabulary will lead to the next step of comprehension or of fluency, sorry, not comprehension, fluency. So once they can read the words, like they know the words, then they just go through practice. And fluency is the ability to you know, read the text accurately. And it doesn't mean that at the start they have to be perfect. It's just through repetition and practice. And eventually the students will become more accurate or become more automatic, like we talked about with reading. Okay, and then comprehension. So everything that they're reading all through their fluency practice, practicing all these sentences and words, can they comprehend the text that they are reading? Okay, so this is the big five of reading literacy. So I needed to kind of set this foundation as we go forward into talking about how to teach it essentially, right? And I just wanna, Pause really quick here. Is there anything that you guys need me to go over one more time? Uh, hopefully I'm not speaking too quickly. I try to um, keep a good speed and um, kind of through these webinars. So I just want to check with you guys. Is everything, everything good, everything clear? Um, and if, if so, then I'll, I'll go ahead and continue. Just want to check with you guys. All right, so far so good. 
All right, sounds good, okay. So with the big five, so now let's go into some teaching methods, all right? So with the big five, that's not really something that we will teach in one lesson. Maybe some of them we can teach in one lesson, but the big five will happen over time. So I just wanna stress that point, it's something that will happen over time as the student's skills develop and um, we work our way up each step. Okay, so first, of course, starting with the phonics skills. So we talked about phonemic awareness and phonics. Those, I believe, can be kind of mentioned or taught in the classroom at the same time. So it's not giving this, not overwhelming the students to um, do both of those at the same time. Because like I said, phonemic awareness is just hearing them. So in EFL settings, uh, when students start learning phonics, this is their first time to actually be exposed to the language. So in a sense, they're doing both at the same time. So starting with the phonics skills, kind of making them aware of the sight words, and kind of putting that as the foundation, to kind of help them um, start reading just from the start, okay? And then vocabulary. Uh, so a lot of things that you guys have said earlier, new words. Um, I'll go more in depth uh, on each of these points in a second, just kind of present to them, but pre-teaching key vocabulary can be very important in getting the students to read and not feel overwhelmed, all right? And then using visual aids to motivate students. So this can be just presenting the story. This can be presenting vocabulary, just giving them something visual to kind of learn in the beginning as well, to learn these words and then kind of bridge them into reading the text, all right? So then background knowledge. So we talked about the students not knowing the concepts. So trying to kind of present the concept to them as well as see what they already know. So there's kind of different ways and kind of other way, like different ways to obtain the student's background knowledge to see what they know, as well as kind of presenting it as the teacher in the class, okay? And then teaching the reading skills. So now we're getting into more of the comprehension part. So teaching the reading skills and then, yeah, understanding. So by reading skills, um, more specific, like giving them the tasks, basically the reading tasks, all right? So these are kind of the steps from top to bottom or bottom to top, essentially, um, of where we wanna go with reading, okay? So like I talked about earlier, when you make awareness and phonics can go together. So this can be, you know, any, any phonics series or any uh, way to teach the phonics to the students. So whether it be through books or, you know, you use flashcards and as well kind of bridging the gap for the students to start reading just getting any kind of phonics readers as well to get the students to be exposed again more to the language because this is the exposure of you know the sounds to the students as well as practicing the phonics targets. So finding a book that can meet the phonics targets um, of your students, and as well um, as as well putting the words and vocabulary that they're learning into context through a story as well, okay? So like here we have Dan. So Dan is a man, the man is Dan, okay? So we're practicing the A, the A, the A target, okay? So it puts them all into the context of the story and they're using more repetition of the phonics target, okay? So like here. And then also, you know, giving a list of the, the sight words. And sight words are those words that hopefully will be more automatic for the students. These are those words that you don't want them to have to break down and decode. So if you see the word A, you don't, you don't have to spend too much time reading the word A or A, uh, depending on how you would say it, or at. So these are the words that would be more automatic for the students and developed over time. Okay? And then, yeah, the picture dictionary, like I talked about, visual aids, 
and um, presenting the vocabulary through visual aids. Okay? So this is what I was talking about here. So visual aids using even audio. Okay, So if you don't want, um, sometimes there'll be the MP3 files with a book, like audio books, essentially. So if you, you know, you can sometimes read to your students or have them listen to the audio in class. Okay, at, this is going to be kind of at the early stages, at the beginner levels of um, of students, of EFL students. Okay, for reading, and then vocabulary. So, with vocabulary, how do you guys present vocabulary to your classes? I'm kind of curious. Do you use flashcards? Do you how how do you present a vocabulary? Do you kind of read something and then when you get to a word they don't know, is that when you kind of um, kind of ask them to or use flashcards, okay, a lot of pictures, pre-teach the core word, okay. Yeah, so a lot through pictures, good visual aids, definition. Yeah, so depending on the level of the students, the definition will, will help. Realia, perfect. Play a mini game, good. Play a mini game to learn vocab. Worksheets, words, pictures, good, okay. So with all this, it's good to pre-teach. I um, talked about pre-teaching the vocabulary. And I assume you guys do this at the beginning of your lessons as well. That's how, I, of course, I would recommend doing this. So you would pre-teach them before before the students would get into the story, essentially. So you pre-teach the vocabulary, okay? And then after uh, pre-teaching, kind of practice the vocabulary through activities, okay? Yeah, so before reading. So like here in the book, sometimes they'll present them already, so you don't need to kind of um, create your own photos or realia. Sometimes they have them in the book already, or you can do through animations and videos. And um, as I was going through school, as I was a teacher in Korea, I always had this wonder of, is it okay to use, so L1 is the term for their native language. So L1 is their native language. So it was always a question to me thinking, is it okay to use L1 in the classroom in general, not just for vocabulary? And in my opinion, um, there's no right or wrong answer to this because we know our students the best. So I would, I would say that if you feel that it would help the students, if it would benefit the students well, it would be okay to use L1 in the classroom. Just make sure not to have your whole lesson in it. But just the key points, maybe using, using it in, di in directions, like giving them the directions for a game or in vocabulary, I always found it, um, yeah, not all the time, only for difficult words. Yeah, so for vocabulary, I always tried to get them to think about what it, the word is in English, and then if they didn't know, kind of bridge it with what it is in their native language as well. Yeah, to clarify meaning if need be. Yeah, so a lot of times I've had some teachers ask me this question. And yeah, just make sure that the percentage of English in the classroom is bigger than the native language in the classroom, essentially. Yeah, so kind of examples like what I would used to do, like using visuals here in the classroom. So can you guys guess what is the vocabulary word for this, this photo? for this uh, gift. Chips, shopping, grab, good, snack, grab, grocery, board, <laughs> good, you're looking at their face. So this is a good way, again, to kind of elicit the, uh, elicit some background knowledge so you can kind of see what your students know, depending on what they, what they think. So not in a good mood, shopping, good. So the answer is, Shopping, okay, so this is shopping. Should be toilet paper, <laughs> yeah, okay. So shopping, and then sometimes if, say the level of my students were kind of low, on the bottom on the bottom of the picture, I would maybe have the, the Korean word or Vietnamese word or whichever country you guys are in, okay. So then let's go with another one here. How about this one here? What vocabulary word do we have here? Busy? Mm -hmm. Multitask, good, high level words. 
Iron clothes. SpongeBob. <laughs> Frantic. Ooh, we're getting some high level words here. Chores. Doing chores. Good. So maybe if a student said doing chores and some other students didn't know what chores was, that would be a good team moment to kind of uh, tell them. So this one here, clean. Okay. Does anyone enjoy cleaning? Anyone have a have a hobby of cleaning? No, me either. Oh, yep, yeah, we have a few. <laughs> it's spiritual. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, cleaning has been embedded into my mind from when I was younger. <laughs> Wiping the mirror <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, depending on the, the day, it's exhausting. Okay, and then we have one last word here. Let's see if anyone can get this one. Try to make this a little more, a little bit more difficult. So it's not as easy as uh, as it looks. So what, this is this last one here. Hit, hitting. Yeah. Swing, swing the bat, play baseball, right off the bat. Okay. Oh. Okay. Pitching. Good, good. Leisure. Okay, I actually did see one person that put the answer. Last time I showed this um, to, uh, to another group, they didn't get the answer, but one person did write it. Mm -hmm. The answer is practice. So practicing. So he's practicing baseball. Okay. Any baseball fans in the in here today? Yeah, so we got some big baseball fans. Yeah, I know in Korea, baseball is a very big sport. There's a big following. Okay. I'm personally, I'm more of a basketball, basketball person. Oh, Oakland, the Oakland days. Actually, I lived in Oakland before I, I was living in Oakland before I came to Korea. Oakland. <laughs> All right, so let's go, go on here. So that's vocabulary. So here now, fluency. So like I talked about, students don't need to be perfect. So when practicing fluency, it's all about the practice. It's all about, yeah, practice, practice, practice. It's very, very important for fluency, okay? So there's different ways and different strategies to do fluency. So I'm going to list uh, quite a bit here. Oops, went too far. So shared reading. So this is kind of um, this is where the student kind of reads reads to the class. So kind of uh, in when I was younger, it was we had a kind of popcorn reading. We called it. So a student would start reading, and then the teacher would say popcorn, and the student would kind of choose another student to start reading, and kind of go in that way. Kind of similar with choral reading. Choral reading, the teacher will kind of read to the students. Then paired reading, obviously with the word pair, put the students together and they kind of practice reading the, the text together. Um, with paired reading, maybe you would want to set out for the students to um, have similar levels, depending on how your class is set up. If you have mixed levels, maybe you can just try to put the pairs together that are uh, that are more close because a lot of times you, you get get into a bit of a, a bit of a problem when once one student's a really high level and one student's really low level kind of uh, frustration can kind of show with that and there's readers theater i always found this fun this is the uh, role playing so with some stories you can get the, the script and then assign the students the different characters and have them practice this way Timed reading, so just time, like timed reading, you give them a, a time limit and kind of have to read. And then I think what a lot of teachers use repeated reading. So it's just the repetition of reading the same story over and over again. Maybe not all in the one class, but maybe reading it class one, but then also reading it again at the start of class two. Kind of getting that repetition, getting, getting them familiar with the words and the story all together. Okay, and you can always do combinations of these reading strategies. So you can do repeated reading in class one to help them get familiar in order for them to get into reader's theater. So there's different combinations that can kind of uh, go together. Okay, 
So these are kind of some reading fluency strategies. And then we get into comprehension. How much does the student understand? And this is where we get into the essential reading skills. So giving them these tasks of identifying certain things in the text, um, basically depending on the student's level and what grade they're in, maybe you wouldn't have them um, do anything too elaborate. So identifying a problem and solution can be something you know, most students can do depending on the story. So just kind of giving them these reading skills and um, giving them these tasks to kind of test their comprehension, see if they really understand the story. Let's see the one. Uh, number one at the very bottom. Oh, number one at the very bottom was scanning for information. Yeah, if you can't see the, uh, the very bottom of that, I'm sorry for that. Okay. All right. So now that we've gone through kind of some basic strategies for each of the big five, let's kind of like look at putting them into the class through graded readers and kind of the reading process, all right? The reading process. So with graded readers, uh, with, these are essentially books. We have to remember that, of course, the level of difficulty is going to affect the, the student's ability to learn. Okay? So like we talked about with overwhelming the students, there's too many new words for the students. This is where graded readers can come into play that kind of help the students um, enjoy reading more and not feel overwhelmed and have enough new words that they're not kind of turned off by reading, right? And there is kind of a statistic, a statistic um, that students reading at, so accuracy in this sense is kind of understanding. So how much of the text can they understand? So not, if the student is understanding 98% or higher, it's going to help increase their, their reading abilities. So that's kind of that sweet spot. And kind of going anywhere lower than that kind of slows the rate of improvement. And anything below 90% is just not very helpful for the students. Like if you're pushing a book that the students don't know too much any of the words, then it's not going to really improve them. Okay? So these were kind of the thresholds. So if you're kind of looking at books to kind of share with your students, kind of look through and see how many words on each page you're going to have to present to the students and how many, you know, grammar structures, like kind of keeping it simple. And this is where the graded readers kind of helps the teacher in that sense. All right. So what are graded readers for those that don't know? So graded readers take, take a story, take like an older story. So in this example, we're taking Alice in Wonderland and then kind of making them more appropriate for the level of the student. So taking them lower and then making them more simple for the student, okay? So how do we do that? Let's kind of compare here. So I'm going to show you first the original, the original Alice in Wonderland story and compare it to a graded reader and see the, the big difference between the two, all right? So, Say I wanted to present Alice in Wonderland to my students. This is the first page of Alice in Wonderland. This is a very long text. So if I wanted to have, may, say, my fifth or sixth grade students read Alice in Wonderland, this is what they would see on the first page. And this is where the overwhelmingness of reading a book comes into play. Okay, so the, the words highlighted in red are kind of the words that I feel I would have to pre-teach to my students. These are the words that maybe they won't know, and I would have to spend time to set them up to read the story by presenting these words to them, okay? So going back to that statistic of 98% is kind of that sweet spot, and then anything below 90% kind of hinders them a bit, so as they're going through just this first sentence, so Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank. So I highlighted this word bank. So maybe students know the word bank, but in this context, 
they won't know. So like, oh, maybe they'll think, oh, Alice is sitting on top of a building waiting for money. Like, that's not, in the, in the context of the story, that's not kind of what they're going to be reading about. Yeah, it's not going to be a bank robber. She's not, you know, it's not elaborate heist or anything. So teaching them the word bank also means, you know, has something to do with being by the river or being by a body of water. Yeah. So just going through. So if the students are trying to read these stories and they go through it in every sentence or every other sentence, they have to stop and wonder, oh, what does this word mean? It's hard for them to build the comprehension, essentially, the understanding of what they're reading. So it just hinders them to be presented with so many things to not be able to kind of comprehend what they're reading. Okay. And Pablo, what does wonder mean? Yeah. A wonderland, what is a wonderland? Just from the story or the story title. Okay. And then this is a graded reader. Okay. So this is a graded reader. So these three pages make up that um, previous slide that I showed you. Okay. So one day, Alice is sitting in the garden with her sister. So instead of having to explain the word bank, maybe the students already know garden. Garden is an easier word to kind of, for them to kind of comprehend. Okay. So going from Alice seeing, seeing the rabbit to the rabbit jumping in, into the rabbit hole. Okay. And then you can see the book has the word curiously bolded so that would probably be the vocabulary word that maybe they don't know, that you would you kind of go through and see what words they uh, wouldn't know. Okay. So it just simplifies. So graded readers very make things more simplified. All right. Does anyone use graded readers in their classroom at all? Do you have like a class library or or anything in your in your classroom? Never have. Uh, it can be difficult to kind of uh, kind of gather into your classroom. Is there anyone in the, any teachers here that have used graded readers to kind of help um, help students um, with their reading? No. Yeah. So hopefully this will kind of present something to you guys to think about maybe incorporating into some lessons later. Because finding graded readers, especially maybe getting more creative with lesson plans or um, having certain stories with the themes that you want to do, yeah, using a graded reader would really help in, uh, in kind of creating that special class for your students. The book level class, I guess, are pre-graded as such. Yeah. So they would be, yeah, there's different levels like here. Like this Alice in Wonderland is like level seven. So we would have different stories like level one graded, um, especially when you go up through the level, there'll be more words. So the lower levels will have less words. So this is, this is an example of a le level seven graded reader. So you can see kind of the sentence structures and stuff for that level. And it would be more simplified as you go down each, each level. Uh, and, some tips. and you can find them anywhere. You can, uh, I'll be sure to, um, find the <laughs> graded readers, um, a lot of them, uh, they're all out there. And um, if we, maybe at the end, I can kind of uh, show you some places, okay? I've been a class some students can struggle. Yeah, with the graded readers, that's another thing, kind of, I'll roughly go over this right now with, uh, with doing the graded readers. Um, one thing that I tried to do towards the end of uh, teaching was giving the students choice as well because we just want to give the students, when the students are able to choose their learning, sometimes like giving them a choice, they're more inclined to be more motivated. So hopefully when you build that kind of foundation of reading and like, if you have that library available to them, that's kind of the biggest step in this um, level of choice is uh, if they have that library there and just have a designated reading time. And then just the students can go in and pick a book and just for say 10 minutes, they can read whichever book that they choose. And that's kind of the, uh, kind of the way to kind of harness the, you know, the enjoyment of reading into the students. So that's kind of one idea to um, think about doing. 
And if you don't have the library in your classroom, maybe if you have your school library, just maybe going in there and having them, you know, check out their own book and then they can read it. And then just kind of monitor, monitor their levels. And even then, if you get to know the students' interests, you can um, maybe, uh, what's the word? You can uh, suggest uh, books for your students to read as well. Okay. So here's the, the definition of graded readers. So graded readers are books written for language learners that are more simplified and are aimed to be more easier. Okay. All right. So some things that we do have coming up with eFuture, we are developing our own e-library. So especially in this age where, you know, where sometimes online learning is more, more prevalent for the students. Um, even you just using this in your classroom, put on the TV. If, you, if each student can't have their own book, you can um, access the, the e-books online and um, present them into your class as well. I'm going to show a quick example of an e-book we have here. So this is, um, hopefully you can see the book right now. So this is Puss in Boots. So this is, this is a graded, re re graded reader, level four, okay? So this is kind of a thing that you can show on the TV, on the screen, on, their, on the students can look at on their tablets and uh, kind of read their own stories. So um, with the e-library, just briefly, the students will take a level test. So it's not like they'll have the whole library available to them. They'll take a level test and then they'll be placed into it and we have access to the books that, um, access to the book that is at their level that they will be able to read. So it's kind of putting them into their, into the level that they can um, kind of read with enjoyment essentially. Okay. So these are our books. So for the, if you were teaching online or you wanted to present to your students and read together. Okay. Your Majesty. So you can also set you know, puss bowing low before the king. Okay. I have brought you a gift from my master. Yeah, so they can have them read along with like this. My plan. Okay. All right. So let's get back from here. Yeah. So how can we utilize graded readers in the classroom? So let's go into the reading process. So there's the three steps for the reading process. So before reading, during reading, and after reading. So with the reading process, some of these you can kind of apply just to a general lesson plan as well. So you can do before the like before the lesson starts, during the lesson, and then like kind of after the lesson as well. So let's just focus on the reading here. So before reading, we're going to, of course, depending on the lesson here, review. And this is where we're going to activate the background knowledge for the students and warm them up at the same time. And then during reading, this is where you, the kind of um, visuals, more visuals come into play, showing them that ebook, having them listen to the story, and then listen and then read, to them, uh, read themselves or as a class, depending on which reading strategy you use in the classroom. And then checking their general understanding and then fluency practice. And then after reading is their comprehension. Um, so comprehension kind of comes in between during and after, but yeah, so after reading, do they understand the words and the story? And then you can do some tests or more activities to go along with the story. Okay, so let's go through each of these levels. So before reading, so like I talked about, it's activating the student's knowledge, um, background knowledge. So you would kind of have them, you know, you can present the cover. If you have the physical book, you can present the cover to the students and ask them, okay, like, uh, what animal do you see on the cover? So what, what animal was this? Wearing a hat here in the front. What is this? It has sharp teeth. It's a wolf. Yeah, it's a wolf. And then kind of 
think about oh, what, what other animals have sharp teeth, have big teeth, like a wolf, lion. Yeah? So these are kind of the kind of ways to elicit what maybe understanding their background knowledge of the students of oh, what other animals do they already know as well. So sharks, foxes, lions, tigers, just kind of saying, making mental notes of, okay, these are the kind of words that students know. And then you can kind of point them uh, again in the, in the other direction of well, what animal is this in the window? What is, what is what's going on in there? What is it? It's a goat. Yeah. Does the goat look happy? How does the goat feel, you think? Kind of feelings, scared, you know, worried. Yeah. So having the students answer like this can be <laughs> existential terror. <laughs> if one of my first graders said that, I would be very, <laughs> very surprised. Right? So just getting that, so by like being surprised, but also like, wow, the students know these. So you know, getting the background knowledge of what the students, kind of feelings that the students know, we can kind of chain the questions together. And as well, before reading, you're setting up the students for the story. And you're kind of focusing them in on the story through this like kind of picture walk. And then you can also do predictions, like, like what's, what's the wolf trying to do? What is, he, what is he doing? Why is the goat terrified? Okay. You can ask them these sort of questions, make predictions, so then when they, when they make predictions and then you go to read the story, then they can kind of focus in. Okay, oh, I had this, even if they don't say it out loud, oh, I had this prediction in my, my head, like, oh, oh, maybe the wolf just wants to talk to the goat and, and like be friends. And then as you read the story, like they can see, oh, my, my prediction was wrong. My guess was wrong, okay? So this is all kind of before the reading kind of setting the students up for the story, all right? So before reading, preparing the students to read, okay, Activi activating the background knowledge, again, again, critiquing vocabulary, predictions, and then maybe having the students listen. So this kind of bridges into the during reading, having the students listen through either the audio or there's also videos, animations that you can present to the students. I'm just going to show a brief bit of this video. Mother Goat is talking to her seven children. And then you can pause it. If you, like, maybe at first you have them listen to it all the way through. And then while listening to the story, you can pause it and kind of listen and repeat. And kind of do all these kind of things for bridging into the during reading. Okay? And yeah, at the end of kind of the before reading and into the uh, during reading. All right. And as well as in giving them, giving the students the opportunity to listen to the story before, sets them up to be able to read late as well. If they heard the sounds of the words, if they saw the words on the screen and heard how the person was reading to them, will be very beneficial to them. Whether you do it through the video or if you are reading, reading like this, presenting the story to the students, depending on how big your classes are. Okay. All right. So some other things before reading. Again, I talked about putting the, putting the students into the story. So the, uh, the wolf and the seven children, so we talked about here, you see in the introduction, it is a story about listening to your mother and being safe. So those are some other talking points that you can kind of bring up to the students before reading, talking about you know, how, how can you be safe? What are some ways you can be safe? And then like here, thinking of your mother, drawing your mother and all this. So this is kind of setting them up for the story. And then during reading, like we talked about, checking their understanding. Their teaching problem. Uh, so I'll get to the, these questions at the end, sorry. I mean, I'm reading, reading the chat at the same time, so I'll be sure to kind of come back to that question. 
And then, so during reading, kind of uh, checking the understanding of the story. Do the students, can they identify the characters? Do they know who is who or what they're saying in the story? And then, like I talked about earlier, bringing in the fluency and taking in these different strategies and using the story, using the graded reader in the reading, in the practice. Huh? And then through the after reading, so kind of book reports, nothing too, depending on the level, nothing too uh, elaborate. Write down three words you learned from the story, to review the story a bit, and then have some activities and tests. Okay? So these are some other, um, other kinds of things that you can do with the students. Um, you can quiz, multiple choice, uh, like I talked about identifying with the reading skills, who said it, okay? So fill in the blanks, all this kind of things you can do. Okay. And then like with these, with these skills, um, I try to stress as well to give more student to student talk. A lot of the times I'm trying to do a little bit as well in the webinar here, where you can, you can stand in the front of the class and, you know, talk and talk and talk and present and read, but make sure to kind of give the students time to talk with each other. Um, students can, can absorb what they're learning more as well through talking with each other, um, or even just talking about the story and understanding the story through talking with each other. Okay? So not just giving individual work, but also including pair and, uh, and group work as well. All right, okay, so now let's, Getting get into some of these activities that we can do with the students. Okay, so the first one here. So we talked about timed reading. So this is kind of a speed reading. So this focuses more on fluency, not so much on comprehension. Um, yeah, you just want to have this as a standalone kind of a practice. There's not really much follow up behind it. It's just practicing the fluency. So you'd kind of give your students a set amount of time. So, and you'd give them the text and then as well, have them, uh, yeah, try to, there's different ways to do it. Either um, time them to see how long it takes them to read the whole, the whole text, or give them a set amount of time and see how many words they can read and that set amount, okay? So I'm going to do this with you guys here. I know there's a lot of limitations to reading exercises and reading activities through webinars here, but I can do this one with you guys. So I'm gonna have my timer here, this blue bar, and I gave you a little help for counting the words as well. So uh, the numbers at the end are how many words are in each section. So when you count them at the end. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds, 20 seconds to read this, okay, when I say go. And I want to see if you can, maybe most of you can maybe read all of them, but this is something that you can do with your students as well, okay? So when I say go, I want you to try to read as many words or read all of this as quickly as you can. All right, are we ready? <clears throat> Give me a yes in chat if you guys are ready for this. Yeah, so read aloud to yourself. Okay. So not just in your head, <laughs> read aloud. Hopefully you're you're not in like a public place or anything to do this, but let's try this. Okay. So ready, set, go. So how many words you can read? Okay, it looks about five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Ooh, some people finished. Okay, so if you can count your words and write in chat how many words you guys got, that's a lot of people done. Maybe I should have made a longer one for you guys, actually. Got a very avid readers in, in here. 15 seconds to finish, good. So maybe if you guys know how long it took you, how long did it take you to finish it? Because we have very well good readers here. The full got turned down towards the end. Done, but didn't comprehend as well. Yeah. So these the speed reading is more of a fluency practice. 71 words. 
58, it's like 18 seconds, good. Yeah, so when we do this in class, one thing to be sure to, um, to monitor is how accurately the students are reading. So remember, we're, we're doing fluency. So the students have to, you have to be able to comprehend what the students are actually reading, like the words. They can't just like kind of mumble or like, the princess is happy and wants the night of the princess. Like, no, that's not, you can't, you know, they, they put all the words into one. So kind of policing, having the students kind of pair up and kind of police each other is like, that didn't, you know, read it more, you know, accurately kind of thing, yeah? So like we did here, you can see how long it takes you to read the text, or you can do the time, or do the how many words. And then you can kind of trial it and see, do multiple times and see how well they can improve. And this is kind of a way of tricking the students a little bit as well to practice reading, because the students will kind of be more focused on, okay, did I beat my time? Did I beat how many words? When they're actually, um, actually just reading. Yeah. All right, so that's a speed reading, a speed reading activity. So it's seeing the differences between the students and then, um, yeah, the, di the difference between each trial for the students and all that. All right. Okay, next one here that we can do, uh, reading feelings. So it's taking the text, it's a good model, model reading and um, brings a little bit more fun instead of just reading, mother is a goat or mother goat is talking to her seven children. It's giving the students a different way of uh, different way of reading. All right. So you can do this secretly. So like you can have different uh, different feeling cards for the students, and then maybe if they're comfortable, they can come up to the front and read a few sentences on the feeling, and have the students guess. Oh, it's this feeling or that feeling, or if you're going to kind of mix it up with, uh, say, the reader's theater. You can give, okay, so in this story, we have the man. The man has to be angry. The prince has to be sad. And the, they have to kind of act out with that feeling. Uh, the new care emoji. Yeah, they have to always like hug themselves or hug somebody, you know. Okay, so this is reading feelings. It gives a little bit more. And then how can you adapt this to groups for different levels, you know? Um, if, if say there's some mixed levels or if your students are very low and they can't say memorize or read all the sentences, um, you can assign multiple students to one role. So instead of one student reading all of the sentences for the prince, student one will get the first sentence, student two will get the second sentence and kind of go on from there. So kind of adapting it, okay? And then the last one here, give you three activities hopefully you can use. Um, it's TPR reading, so total physical response. So this is um, kind of getting the students moving. So a lot of times they can be sitting down and reading. This is another activity to kind of get them up and active. Right? So what I'll do is kind of take a text. So here's a page out of um, a reading series. So we'll take this, these sentences here, so they're practicing uh, weather. I mean, you can kind of put them on a slide or you can write them on the board, whichever um, resource you have available to you. And then first, just having the text, you have the students read it. Hi, how is the weather there? It's rainy today, it's cloudy today, it's snowy today, and go through. And then you would have these symbols that would represent an action. And then you'd kind of have different levels. So like you, would, this would be level zero, essentially just reading the text. And then this would be level one. So you put, put one of the, um, the symbols over a word, and when students read that word, they have to do the action at the same time. So it'd be hi, how, so they would clap. And then you can get more intense for the students, adding two at the same time, so they have to jump and clap with how, and then you can go extreme, and you kind of do different levels, and the students kind of get excited and, you know, bring, bring this more, uh, more, um, active reading as well, being active while reading, essentially. Okay, so giving the students a challenge. Okay, so that is a kind of TPR uh, reading activity that you guys can do. All right, is there any questions on the activities?
Anything that I need to kind of go over again? This one fun, yeah. So yeah, my students love it. Um, yeah, you can just have the students all do it in the class as a whole class. You can put them in groups. You can you can do like an elimination style where if you you're watching and you see a student not not able to do it. I kind of did the elimination style sometimes where if they kind of messed up. The, the actions that they you know kind of go down and see the last student usually there's still like five or like 10 students still at the end so yeah. all right so kind of my final thoughts here um with the reading so this is kind of the our goal our goal when we're trying to get the students to to read is um get the students first to like the hardest part usually is getting the students to read a story so what we have to do there is, you know, find the interest, like I talked about, giving the students choice um, as the teachers, if we know what they like, suggesting the stories, even if it's a comic, sometimes we do, there are some like uh, educational comics, the like graded readers that are comics that the students can read. And still, you know, we just, we want them to read. And so when we get to that start and then getting them interested in the stories, getting them pulled in, and then at the same time, getting them to understand what they're reading. So getting them interested enough to read and then having them understand what they're reading, and then having them feel confident and comfortable with the story. So like doing all those strategies, working on their fluency, and then that kind of builds that motivation for the students. And they just start thinking about reading more positively rather than like, oh, I have to read again or like trying to get them more confident in their abilities as well of um, just like being able to enjoy reading in the class or and that kind of goes into more of the in intensive and extensive reading as well. We, a lot of times students don't like reading just because we assign it to them. So if we give them that choice, give them that kind of ex extensive reading, then, you know, it, it'll give them a more positive association as well. Okay. So now we're getting into some Q and A. Um, hopefully, yeah. If there's uh, anything that I can help you guys um, with, how to make my students interested in reading? Yeah, I'd say it starts with kind of the topics and kind of building. It also, have to with building interest in reading. You also kind of have to pinpoint um, kind of why the students aren't interested in reading at the same time. Because if I, I've had students where oh, they, they don't like reading just because they don't feel confident in their skills to read. So it's kind of taking the steps back and like, um, who's that guy? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with his hair, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like looking at the students. Um, their their abilities their reading abilities being you know is that is that where it's coming from is that where um is that the reason why and then going from there like if, if they're just good readers and if they are good readers and just don't like reading books then it's trying to find as a teacher finding their interests finding a book that would pique their interest would be the next step of that Okay. So it's it's not an easy task. I'm not gonna. Yeah, it's not a very easy task to uh, get the students interested in. It's a lot of work for the teachers, but that's kind of where I would go with my students uh, if they needed to uh, to try to get them interested in reading. Okay. okay so we have some more um, some in the Q and A. Let's see up here. Yeah, so with, um, actually, so I have a question here about um, videos for the, uh, for some of the books, for the books that we have. All of our videos are from, for our readers, from, uh, I think, up until level three. We have all of those on our um, 
on our YouTube channel. So if you search for eFuture on the YouTube channel or on, on YouTube, you'll find some of the uh, story animations and videos on there as well as a, as a source. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever recommend comics? I think, I think with, with reading in English, finding the right comics or finding the right materials to use in your class. Are we talking, uh, Stephen, this was your question. Are you talking about reading using comics in the classroom? Is that, can you clarify, are you talking about use, um, using the comics in the classroom or? Also, if any of you are leaving, I just wanna say thank you so much for uh, spending your Friday afternoon with me. And uh, I hope you guys have the, a good rest of your day and a great weekend going forward. So, so for private or outside of class. Um, so there are, like I, I previewed uh, or showed earlier, there are some kind of, uh, we do have some comics actually within our catalog. So we do have some comics here that are graded. So it's just, uh, yeah, just to encourage them to read. It's, it, it's just, uh, with comics, they're just in a different format. I think nowadays, um, comics shouldn't be looked at too um, negatively. I know they can, a lot of times, just based on, on past, they can be looked at kind of negatively a little bit, just because like, oh, this, this is not really academic. But if we're looking in the private and outside of class, more extensive reading, comics, uh, they can, that, would, that would be a good way for the students to enter into the extensive reading. So if they're reading something, you know, it's like we have here, we have the alien hunter. So this is a comic. Just getting the topic of say, they like aliens or, or whatnot. As they start reading more and say they build that interest of you know, aliens or extraterrestrial or even just science fiction. Say they're getting into the science fiction genre, that could lead them into novels and into other things later on. So comics can be a start for the students. All right. Can I have a look at activity two instructions? Yep, I can go back to that slide for you. Okay. So this was activity two, so this was activity three. So the reading feelings. So just doing again a description of this one. So like I had here, just getting, making these kind of cards or you can just write the feelings on the piece of paper and then give them to the students and they kind of have to read with those feelings that they would get. Okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, so Joy, I've got your question here for the speed reading activity. So this is mostly just the aim of the activity is just to practice fluency, getting the students to read. Um, I would most likely do this in pairs, not individually. So I would put it in pairs. One student would time them. Like you say, if you have a stopwatch, one student will time them and, look and kind of police them through. Are they reading them accurately? And then they would, you kind of have this kind of worksheet here, and then they would um, kind of write down what the progress was throughout. So it's more of a fluency practice. So yeah, you can, you can go through trial one and then have the students tell you how many words that they, they were able to read, and then kind of go through and then they can kind of test themselves whether or not they can uh, beat their, their score, essentially. Uh, so some other TPR reading activities. Um, thank you, Stephen. So some other, one other one that I can just think of off the top of my head for TPR. Um, say you're, you're practicing vocabulary. If you're practicing vocabulary, say you're practicing, an easy one would be sports. If you're practicing sports, have them create an action for the sports or create an action for the vocabulary that they learned. So um, yeah, if they are learning, if they're reading something about sports, 
So if soccer came up, you would have the students all kind of standing up and you know, kick, pretending they're kicking a ball. So it's any actions that they can associate with the words or what they're reading as well. So the TPR and TPA gave you here is kind of more for, for fun and more focusing on them practicing the reading, all right? Promote reading. Yeah, same question here. I kind of briefly went over this, how to promote students reading by themselves at home. It's, um, yeah, just trying to get that, like I talked about with building interest with both the students. It all starts from the beginning of getting them interested in reading. And if they're not interested in reading, figuring out like uh, what, what kind of things that we need to cover. And then maybe assigning them a book that they have a good interest in. So like giving them a basketball book if they like basketball. Okay. All right, thank you guys so much. Yeah, if there's any other questions, please uh, let me know or let me flash my email one more time for you guys. Feel free to email me if you guys have any other questions. Um, I'll do my best to, to get back to you guys. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope I was a help for you guys and feel a little bit more confident in, or like have more ideas on how to uh, kind of teach reading for your students, even just if it was an activity. And I hope um, I was a help, some help for you guys today. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. You guys were great. VUS, your English, your future.